Today I want to look at a really old website here. Um, what does it say? When was it built? Copyright 2020, although obviously it wasn't built in 2020. This reminds me of websites that were built back in the early 2000s. And you can tell because it has the three column layout right here and right hand navigation. That was something people were doing back in the early days here and there, putting the navigation on the right side to be different. However, it's a really bad idea. So we're just gonna go through this website right here and see what's so wrong about it and make sure that you aren't doing the same things with your website. So let's begin with the navigation. The problem with it being on the right hand side is the right hand side of a website is typically where you see ads and ad banners and the web user has been trained uh, into that to always expect ads on the right therefore they've developed a blindness to the right side of a website because nobody wants to look at ads etc etc so this is not good for these guys because their navigation is where people are going to ignore it it's not going to get the full attention as if it was over here on the left hand side so never put your navigation on the right because people will be blind to it and it won't get enough attention. Next point, the navigation should be like this where it's at the top and then follows you down. It gets fixed at the top and then just follows you as you scroll. On these older websites, we weren't doing that back in the day. Um, maybe, maybe 10 years ago, people started doing this with the the scrolling horizontal navigation at the top. So you definitely want to have that on your website if you don't. It's really important. That way the user always knows where they are. On this site, I'm lost as soon as I scroll down. But if you have the navigation always present, then you're always going to know where you are and you can always click to where you want to go. So that's one big thing. We should get that going. New navigation up the top. And then let's talk about this section right here. So it isn't abundantly clear to me what they do when I land on this, which is a big problem. They have something cute, right? Treat your feet. It rhymes. It's clever. It's, um, it has some sort of a meaning to it, you know, like to take care of yourself. And it's a little bit of a, a play on words. But being cute doesn't really communicate unless it's very, very, very correctly done. You can't lose the meaning, right? You shouldn't lose your meaning when you're trying to be clever with your rhymes or your words like this. At that point, it's not working for you and it's actually working against you. So, you know, never allow yourself to lose your meaning at, um, just so you can have something clever which people aren't going to get. Instead, you need to have something very simple. You know, we, um, basically there's a, an unmet need for people who need help with their feet, right? There's some sort of a problem, an issue, an unmet need. You need to say what you do for that problem and what your solution is, and then the end desired result. So we solve problem X with solution Y, so you get desired result Z. That's what they need to put here, okay? You can call that a unique selling proposition. Put that right here, and people are gonna know right away what, what they're gonna get from this company. Otherwise, something like treat your feet doesn't communicate because people have an issue if they're on this website that they need to solve, they have an unmet need, and you need to mention it, all right? Problems with your feet, whatever it is, and then say what your solution is. The solution is obviously, you know, this, the doctor's professional quality care and the end result would be, you know, being able to walk without pain or whatever that is. But you need to spell all of that out right here in the middle and not do something cute like this because cute doesn't communicate unless it's, a, unless it's really perfectly done and it has the meaning attached to it. So, Let's get that unique selling proposition put in and then get the navigation put up at the top, right? Kind of like this. 
This is pretty classic. Logo here, navigation here, unique selling proposition here, right? And then a call to action. So we then we then want a nice button for a call to action. They don't have that. So it would be request a free consultation, talk to the doctor about your feet, whatever it is. You got to tell them what you do and then what they need to do next. So we got to get a call to action. That's a huge missing point here. Got to have that. Even though this is over here on the navigation uh, request appointment, people are going to be blind to this because it's on the right hand side. You need a nice button and a striking contrast. That's why this CTA is orange. This one is orange. That's why you do that. You got to put an accent color on it. See these, right? Calls to action contrast and color. So there's a lot wrong with this initial screen. The whole thing needs to be redone. The whole thing needs to be redone from the bottom up. I wouldn't even bother going in to like fix this within its own design. You know what I mean? I wouldn't, I wouldn't even keep any of this. I would just redo the whole thing. But as far as what's wrong with it, we're just, we're just going to touch on what's wrong with it and what it needs to be. Um, as we scroll down, we see a really unattractive contact form, which doesn't have any call to action connected to it. It doesn't say request a free appointment. It, it's just basically a form all by itself, all by its lonesome, and that's really not gonna convert well. Additionally, submit is not gonna convert well either. This needs to be an instruction, you know, book my appointment or schedule my call. It needs to be a command like that. Um, and then just design wise, it looks really bad. This isn't really inviting people. This isn't doing a great job at getting people to fill this out. And it's right here sandwiched in the middle. It's very easy to not look at. Something much better is make a whole section like this, All right? It grabs your full attention. This form right now has my full attention once I arrive on it. Once I scroll down from this initial screen, nothing has my full attention because there's too much data. I have three columns of data to look at. I'm just going to bounce around one, two, three, and maybe scroll down further. But you want to display your stuff section by section like this. All right. So this whole form has to be redone in its own horizontal section. See what I mean by that? Its own section, nice and big. Back in the day, websites were made like this. They were very cramped. The whole idea was like it was a flyer. You were just trying to jam everything into, you know, one little screen. Whereas websites these days, they're very deep. Look at all these sections. The end result is the data is a lot easier to consume and there's a lot more negative space there's a lot more padding and margin do you see what i mean by that like you can separate pieces out so there's a lot more spacing as opposed to this where it's like a newspaper almost right you're not you're not gonna successfully take and root people's attention if you have columns like this you are if you're going to do it like this because there's only one way to look it's this section okay this section okay this one this one. When you do it wide like this, you're just taking them on that journey piece by piece. So that's why the three column layout really isn't helping you to convert visitors into sales. Other issues here, um, this text is a little bit hard to look at because the headings are so small. So I feel this could be broken up a little bit. Everything is bold, which is also not nice to look at. People, you know, digest text very um people are very picky with how they digest the text if they see a whole big sea of text like this people won't want to read it unless they're very deep in the funnel and they're quite interested if they're not if they're just kind of curious and landing on your site and they see all this they're gonna be like oh god uh, let me scroll down further oh i can't there's nothing else oh okay i guess i'll go so you really need to make your text easy to digest you know something like this big heading just a few lines, big heading, a couple lines. This is much more likely to be read than this stuff. Also, people scan read anyway, so you really want to have really good headings created. Like these are these are well 
well-crafted headings right here. Knackered means tired, by the way. And the heading is, is kind of getting you to, the heading is closing you on the idea of reading the text below. That's what it's supposed to do. The heading should get your interest to bother reading the text below. When you do it like this, nobody wants to bother. Okay, moving on. And we hit the bottom of the site and we're the footer with the feet. That was funny. Um, the color palette is pretty bad. Kind of pea soup green vibe. The whole thing needs to be redesigned as we touched on. Um, this is not readable. So that is not good. These are very old logos. So, you know, you land on this site and it feels old because it is old. Something like this is a really wasted opportunity. This should be front and center, the doctor himself. It builds a lot of trust to, you know, put the owner or the CEO or manager, whoever, and put a picture of them. But he's just kind of tucked away in the bottom here. And people, when they're choosing, you know, a doctor, they, they want to choose a person. They're not choosing the company. You know what I'm saying? It's, there's a personal connection there. People want to do business with people. So when you're a practice like this, a medical practice, you really want to feature the good doctor. But, you know, without seeing a picture of him, it's kind of, it's kind of uh, limited on its impact. They're talking about the doctor and um, I would like to see who this is. So you should really get a picture on your homepage, have someone introduced as the face of the company. That's gonna build a lot more rapport. So that's a big missed opportunity. They should get the doctor put on here, put a nice photo, nice happy smile, and all set. And, and that's just looking at what they have. There's a whole bunch of things that they don't have that they need, such as a testimonial section. Like there's a lot missing. They don't have testimonials, which is surprising, right? And by that, I mean something like this, right? Happy students. Put some real people, some real photos. That goes a very long way in building trust. So that's missing. Other things that are missing are some vital statistics. People love that stuff. People love hard numbers. This is a great example of that for Life with Paint. All right. 54,000 students, 2,000 classes, 17 venues. People love hard numbers. They represent reality. And you, you want to make yourself as real as possible on your website. So if Dr. Dr. Douglas here made a section, he could put, you know, 2,000 patients treated in business 30 years. Um, What's something else he could put? I don't know, 5,000 bunions cured. Whatever it is, he should put some hard numbers like this, and that's gonna build a ton of trust right away. People are gonna feel much more reassured that they're at the right place. So that's another section, all right? Some vital statistics, testimonials, you need to get the call to action done properly the introduction properly with a photo. And uh, I don't I don't see, although they have these here as services, typically you want to get a little, uh, dive a little deeper than just having a little button for each service. Um, if we go over here for services, you know, it's pretty big. There's a nice big heading. There's an image, nice big heading, image, heading, image. Uh, you're really going to get the attention. If you're just putting your services like this, it's not going to get attention and you won't be able to present your solution. So you want to put it like this where you can space them out and talk about each one individually and have the link to the page. This is just way too compact. All right. So the services section needs to be redone. There's a lot that needs to be done on this website as we've seen. 
and um, and there's still more there isn't I'm just reading some of the text they need a section where they talk about the um, the discomfort of the unmet need of someone who doesn't have their feet in order right that's another section that they don't have talking about the pain point or the unmet need or the problem so it goes on and on and on anyway those are a, a bunch of points that are wrong with this website and a lot of older websites are like this they're just like business cards they don't have these whole these whole sales funnel elements all right websites are really different these days there's a billion websites online and you can no longer afford to do this back in the day you could do this this was totally normal you were winning if you just had this back in the day when not everybody had a website if you if you just had this website and your other competitors didn't even have websites then you were winning like no problem but now everyone's got a website so your websites have to be optimized really to a whole other level now right a lot of sales a lot of marketing uh, elements built in like this to build up trust and to build up um, rapport so this did work but no longer works um, so when you get your website you got to make sure you get a, a proper website from a professional like clear imaging all right don't go try to make a wix website yourself you'll probably end up with something like this if you go try to go to squarespace or wix or WordPress and you try to put together a website, oftentimes they they don't come out very good when you do a, a do-it-yourself website. Um, what was that one that I was looking at? This is a great example of someone who probably had a professional make them a website on Squarespace. But it's just a business card. you know. And this isn't even readable. This text is so big, I can't even read it. And I'll Though they have a nice logo and there's a nice background photo and they probably paid like a a solid grand or two for this website and it's been made like with what wix or squarespace who made this wix yeah there we go wix.com so this is what you end up with if you do a do-it-yourself website and it's basically as good as this website <laughs> basically it doesn't have a lot of sales and marketing elements built in and it looks really cookie cutter. Basically just showing your services. So you need to get the pros to do it for you who can create a custom website for your company, not making your company fit into a template. And that's the problem with going with like Wix or Squarespace. You're trying to fit your company into the template. It doesn't really look, it doesn't really work. You need a custom website. So Clear Imaging can help you with that. Clearimaging.com, let us know. We've been doing it for two decades help tons of American companies. We will make your website fit you like a tailored suit. So come on down to the contact page and let us know if there's anything we can do. And if you have a website, I'd love to take a look. You can put it in the comments and I can do a little video for you and give you some strategies and tell you what sales and uh, marketing elements your website is missing. Cause I bet you, I assure you that your website is missing some key marketing elements um that we touched on here or that i haven't even touched on yet so go ahead put it in the comments and we'll take a look all right so until then thank you very much and take care